Good afternoon, good evening, good day, wherever you are in this wonderful world. This is Harry, the Learning Difficulty Expert, and with me today, once again, is the inestimable <laughs> Sally Estlin. Hey everyone, it's Sally here, the Holistically Fit Specialist. So what a day, Harry. It's, uh, it's spring, is springing. Have you noticed the magnolias are out? Goodness me, it's so beautiful. Not quite here. It's a bit colder here, but we do have some blossom and the, the, the wattle's coming out. This no. just late yesterday, yeah. day before. It's actually been very cold. It's been in the negatives there, hasn't it? Minus five we had yesterday morning. Oh. Minus five. <laughs> that makes me feel cold at the thought of it. Goodness me. <laughs> anyway, we digress. So what are we chatting about today, Harry? <laughs> today we're talking about a fun topic. <laughs> it's why diets don't work. A fun topic, I think a fun topic, absolutely. Why diets don't work or diets in general. Yeah, totally. Have you ever dieted? I, I never have. You never have? Oh, my goodness, you're blessed. Yes. I don't know. I can't even remember how old I was when we started, but um, yeah. probably in my 20s. Yeah. In the, right. And I think probably today people are starting even younger than that. But diets don't work, Harry. They just don't work. They're a fallacy. In fact, I don't know anybody that's dieted who didn't put on weight. It, yeah, very interesting you say that because, yes, it's a short-term loss, but a long-term gain in the, in the sense of overall weight. So, yeah, short-term, you can go hard and fast, but it's not sustainable, and that's the key. It's sustaining that weight off. So my main source of information on this whole topic, apart from the scurrilous rumours that I pick up on Google, <laughs> is a guy called Tim Spector who works at King's College in London. Yep. And he's done. He's uh, he's published over seven hundred academic papers, so he's he's pretty consistent and determined. And he's been studying and following the biomes, in other words, the gut bacteria, yep. and the and the, um, the weights and all the other biological results from a set of 5,000 twins. 5,000 twins? Oh, my God. No, it's a really interesting study. So he's able to isolate a whole lot of the other factors out of it because he's comparing twins. Were they identical twins? I don't know. Oh, yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, he, he, can, he, he can eliminate most of the other lifestyle environmental factors DNA factors that would yeah. would appear in most other studies. So it's written a really interesting book. I love it. I love this book. It's called The Diet Myth. The Diet Myth. And if anybody watching this is really interested about an evidence-based view about the importance of what you put in your mouth or expose yourself to and why you might get fat or not, this will, I think, give you the best answer. Wow. And when was that written? So... No, this was published in 2015, oh, so quite well, recent. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a really important topic to talk about, Harry, because it's on everybody's lips, you know. It's like, oh, I've got to go on a diet or I'm on a diet, I can't, I'm on a diet or whatever. And, you know, what is the main reason people go on diets for? From my perspective. It's because I'm... <laughs> It's because a minute on the hips, a lifetime on the hips. <laughs> Absolutely. That is a good saying, a minute on the lips, yeah. Um, it's true. It's about body image. It's about body yeah. image it comes down to it. And also your health, you know, but um, yeah. probably go hand in hand. Um, yeah. Oh, where did I, I saw a stat here? And Sorry. You go. Yeah, 45 million... Americans every year are dieting and they spend over $33 billion on weight loss products. Wow. I like, as we've discussed before, the world is becoming very obese and overweight. In Australia, it's sort of almost two thirds, the same in, the, in North America. Two thirds of people, of adults, are either overweight or obese. Two thirds, that's two out of three people. So, you know, it's where we're getting a, a much fatter as a nation and more unwell. So, you know, this whole aim of diet and yes, one to look good, but the health implications, Harry, are huge, enormous. So do you know how many types of diets are out there? I was just, I mean, off the top of my head, I wrote some down. The ketogenic diet, 
stone diet, the vegan diet, the vegetarian diet, the South Beach diet, the Atkins diet, the liver cleanser, raw food, blood type, Mediterranean diet, juice diet, cabbage diet, blah, blah, blah. There's a diet for everything. You know, low, low carb, high protein, yep. low fat, Dukin, yeah, oh, yeah. Paleolith, paleo, yeah, and so on. Well, it's interesting because Atkins talks about some of the stats in the, he's British, so he looks at the UK. Yep. In 1980, UK, 7% were obese. It's now 24%. In Australia, if we look at AIHW data, 10% were obese in 1980, and it's now 25. And one in four Australian kids. I know. That, that's, that's the worry. The, the other thing is that at any one point in time, one in five English people are on a diet. One in five. And in the US, 60% of Americans apparently would like to lose weight, but, but only a third now bother which is way down wow. on previously because they've seen that it doesn't work. Yeah, well, 95%, I saw a stat somewhere, 95% of diets don't work and most regain their weight back in one to five years. And don't quote me on this specifically, but um, I was reading research probably last year of um, The Biggest Loser and the guy did a research of contestants on The Biggest Loser. And, you know, yes, they lost a lot of weight, a lot of weight. But that came back on. Like, it wasn't a permanent weight loss. And he did a number of studies. And often you put on more weight after dieting than you do if you sort of um, remain the same. So, you know, you're fighting metabolism and all these other things are going against you, They're literally sabotaging your weight gain. So, you know, it's a very fine line. But at the end of the day, in something I'm really passionate about, if you eat fresh, healthy food, you know, and change, just to tweak a few things, healthier habits, you don't need to diet. Lifestyle choice and the lifestyle change. Because dieting is getting rid of unhealthy choices that you've usually, you know, piled up over the time. So, you know, get rid of the... I, I think... Yeah, I think one of the real danger points that I'm aware of is that if you diet and try and, and you achieve a weight loss of more than 10% of your body weight fast, mm. then you, you, your metabolism will adjust and you will then permanently have to eat less. So it's, you know, if, you, if you're going to go on a diet and you want to lose weight, really make sure you don't, you don't lose more than 10%. Don't even approach that because it'll set you up for a cycle of disaster. Yeah, and then adrenaline. And disappointment. Organ loading and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, yeah. sustainable yeah. weight gain is half a kilo a week. That's sort of what I work with with my clients. You know, post babies and all that sort of stuff, yes, you know, get yourself back into shape. But how you look is based on 80% of what you're eating. You know, exercises in there and mindset and all that sort of mm. stuff. But mm. what you put in your mouth is going into your body and, you know, I've got this old age, um, you know, this little formula that I use that what goes in has to be less than what goes out. So whatever energy you're expending, it has to be, you know, above what the amount of calories that you put into your body versus what you're actually, how many calories you're burning up during the day. And that's a manageable way of a slow um, way of readjusting your body to the weight that you want. So if, like with my clients, for example, not that I'm a calorie counter because it's really about the type of food that you're putting in, but just as a rough guide 12, for chicks anyway, 1,200 to 1,500 for the average to, to keep your calories within that range. And then, yes, look at the nutrient-dense food that you're eating, not just empty calories. And, and that should help you, along with exercise, regular exercise, maintain your weight and, and possibly lose a bit as well. So... Yeah, I mean, so there are only guidelines. Yeah, there are only guidelines. Well, rough, yeah, rough for sure. But you know, you cannot beat uh, healthy choices and maintaining a healthy lifestyle. And then there is mm. a need to diet. Diet is a it's a terrible word. You know, if we look at nutrition and the quality of food that we're eating, what we're eating, how much we're eating, and when we're eating, and why we're eating, then we can get to a lot of the root cause of weight issues as well. So, yes. One of the other things Tim talks about is um, when 
once you're obese for a while, if you if yeah. you slip down that slope, yep. um, two changes occur. Firstly, the reward mechanism for, for food changes. Yeah, right. In your brain. Yep. And secondly, your propensity to small fat changes. So once you are obese, it is really hard to reverse it permanently. Yeah, wow. So the important thing is monitor your weight. And once you start putting on the pounds, that's when you need to take action. Yeah, and just be aware. Once you have that awareness, you can do something about it. Like, you know, particularly... Once you can't see the crown jewels, it's too late. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, if you can't touch your toes and, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> terrible, Harry. Oh, goodness me, absolutely. Um, what were you saying about that book is fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Um, we were talking about monitoring your weight. So, uh, you know, and it's all, when I come back to about what time you eat, because so many people skip breakfast and, you know, there's lots of things about fasting and we don't want to get into the ultimate sort of weight to food. However... Loading up late at night time when you're ready to go to bed, empty calories, like you're not going to use them up because you eat to fuel your body, you know, give the mitochondria some power, you know, they're the power of your body. So if you're going to sit on the couch and watch telly for the evening, how much energy are you, are you using up as opposed to walking around all day or going to the gym or something? You're loading it up too heavy late at night and it's just, it's just wasting mm. sitting there. It's, it's but we are, but we are all different. And I mean, I used to um, love to have a breakfast. In the last year, I've actually don't hardly have breakfast. Mm. Um, so, I mean, the Mediterranean approach would be to have a big meal in the middle of the day, mm. light breakfast, light yeah. dinner, big meal in the middle of the day. It doesn't suit our lifestyle that well, mm. unfortunately. But I mean, so I mean. So, the reasons the reasons that I can think of are we're sedentary, we're not exercising as much as we were, we're driving everywhere, we're driving kids everywhere. Um, we've, we're eating a much narrower range of foods and that's impacting the microbes in our gut and yeah. that's affecting how we put on weight or not. Stress is another cause of putting on weight. It's a really important cause. Um, the other, the other is that um, that you might have heard of the hygiene hypothesis. We're living in too much clean. more mm. yeah, too clean, too clean. So it's having an impact on weight gain too. Oh, um, absolutely, and also fast food. You know, it's so much more accessible. Yeah. It's not. It's cheap. It's not basically cheap, but you know, it's a quick option. Particularly if you're out on the road. Uh, you know, a lot of and I don't want to categorise, but, you know, tradies or whatever, particularly when I was reading up on stuff, it's just easy to drive in and get a sausage roll or to get a meat pie or whatever. You know, you have to be quite disciplined to find healthy food when you're out on the road a lot. Taxi drivers, um, anybody driving around during the day? Taxi drivers are probably the best example because yeah. they're sedentary and yeah. eating badly. Mm. Yeah. At least tradies move about a lot. Yeah, well, that's right. Burning it off a bit, but stuck in a car. Yeah. It's a taxi driver. And, and portion sizes are another issue. Absolutely. They're getting bigger. Yep. And so I throw out your big plates. And absolutely. That's what I was going to say. I recommend just getting a small plate. So, and also what I mentioned before, it's, it's what you eat. So you might have 1,200 calories to play around with, but you don't want to blow half of that on a thick shake. And go, you know, where's where's the nutrition out of that? So get nutrients mm. in your food, get back yeah. your buck when you when you with whatever you're eating, and as you said, portion sizes, and you know, do it on small plates, or give yourself a smaller serve, and then go back for more later if you like. I mean, it takes twenty minutes for your food to register that you're actually that satiation, that full feeling. So, you know, and we need to eat slow. We shouldn't be eating in front of the telly and the news and all that other stuff. But, you know, eat, eat smaller portions, eat it slowly, and then look at when you're eating it. And, and also... And, and eat with other people. Eat. Oh, it's a social. Okay. Yeah, that sense of community. I love that. It's super important. And, okay. um, and look at how it makes you feel when you've eaten certain foods. 
So, you know, it might be pastas or breads that you might feel a bit sluggish or the next day be really tired. So, you know, you can tune your, I don't like the word diet, but the, your nutritional choices and listen to how it affects your body because that's super important too. Um, Very important, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and, and that can change, you know. Mm. So for women, after you've had a baby, all your hormones change and, you, and, and your food preferences may well change. And as we go through the different decades of life, food, food preferences change. Yeah, they sure do. Sure do. Just yeah. get off the sugar. <laughs> we won't get on a high horse about that one. <laughs> um, so well, I- sugary, sugary drinks are a major cause, main, major cause of obesity, aren't they? Mm. And sugar-rich food. Absolutely. And processed foods, all that sort of stuff. Empty calories. Empty calories. Yeah. Very addictive. And they're hidden. Yeah. But, um, so I, had I cannot a- believe. I cannot believe the stuff they they offer you at the movies. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Is there anything good in there? Chop tops and if you go gold class, not that I have for a long time, but a lot of fried food and um, ooh, yuck. Um, yeah, but there's the popcorn, you know, that's a standard and that goes back to whenever the film started, I'm sure. Popcorn was always a part in there, but it's just not the popcorn. It's the yeah. butter and, and then it's the, um, now they have the Skittles or the chocolates and the Choc Tops and, the, and then the large, yeah. you get the package with the large popcorn and the large soft drink and then whatever yeah, else. Terrible. Chocolates terrible. Yeah, terrible. Terrible. Yeah. But um, what was I going to say? So I had sort of three... Three tips, if you like, if you can reduce your stress, because that was one thing that we were talking about, stress and your diet mm. and that sort of thing. Uh, reduce yeah. stress and restore some balance. So 80-20 rule, 80% good, 20% naughty. That's my sort of thing. You'll end up sleeping better because sleep also mm. affects your diet big time and your weight. And then if you restore your balance, 80-20, and remove some of the calories that you're having, those excess calories, you and um, get some exercise, then you will be um, going in the right direction as well. So you've got to combine that exercise, which is 20%, 80% is your food. And then by reducing your stress, removing your calories, uh, you'll be having a lot healthier eating options, which is really important. So you won't be more clean yeah. and, and make better choices. So one of the things I'd, I'd like to add, particularly for men, yep. is that the definition of obese and overweight is, is lodged in BMI, which is yep. body mass index. Yep. It's not a particularly brilliant measure. Yeah. I would prefer to use waist to height ratio, yeah. particularly for men, because the visceral fat, the fat around your organs, yep. you know, if you're one of those blokes that has, you know, the big tummy here and you feel it and it's hard, that's not super, That's not surface fat like mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fat around the organs and that is the most dangerous. So dangerous. And so dangerous. waist to height will pick that up. And what you should be is, is under, under 0.5 or under 50%. It's a very easy measure to remember. Yeah. You just want to be under 50%. Yeah. And you're spot yeah. on because I call that the grog fat, you know, with the, the big gut there. And uh, there was someone I saw the other day, I just said, when are you due? Like, you're going to burst. It is rock hard. Time <laughs> bomb. You're going to have a heart attack any second. So it was a bit blunt. But it was true. You know, it's, it's yeah. little. Yeah. And I've seen it in a number of women too, and I know they're quite big drinkers. And we just call it grog fat, got great legs, the skinny fat look, you know, like not a huge amount of time, yeah. don't look too bad, but all stuck in the middle. And what are, where are yeah. all the organs? They're trying to swim through and work up through that. It's, it's scary. It's true. Yeah, there's no so there. my, tips, my tips today are, first of all, you have to resolve to lose weight, so make that commitment. Yep. Secondly, realise realize that diets don't work. Yep. They don't work for me, they don't work for you, and they're not going to work for Sally. Yep. And then rebuild your lifestyle. Very and you have to do this consistently and really for the rest of your life. And, and, so and then, fun. you know, that'll do lots of benefits. Yep. So the bottom line is diets don't deliver. Yep. It's a false promise. Don't believe it. Yeah, absolutely. And eat to live. Don't live to eat. That's my little... Farewell part two. Live to eat, yes. Although I do love eating. <laughs> I love eating. I love my food. When 
is a community. It's fantastic. And yes, we do need to do it, but we don't, you know, it's not around every meal. <laughs> you know, like, oh, no, what, what, is it 10 o'clock? I made an oxtail last weekend. Made an oxtail last weekend. Delicious. Oh, wow, Harry. In the slow cooker or? No, no in the pressure cooker. Pressure cooker, yeah, yeah. Mm. Some anchovies, you know, muddles <laughs> up in this beautiful, rich flavour. Teresa wouldn't be coming you for that. <laughs> My vegan girl, yes. <laughs> she doesn't mind. Live and let live. We yeah. respect each other. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Different paths. Absolutely. All right, Sally, we probably should finish up now. Okay. That, well, that terrific, awesome, awesome topic. Uh, very important. But, you know, the number one takeout is diets don't work. So, you know, we'll have to choices every day give you five give you five on that sally <laughs> smack there harry <laughs> all right well i look forward to chatting to you with you next week <laughs> i wouldn't slap you yet <laughs> and uh can't wait to uh, hear what our topic's going to be we'll work that out shortly yeah awesome yeah we'll work out okay right. see you sally have a, have bye a then. See you, darling. bye